A portion of this video is sponsored by Discover Data Science, powered by Wiley. More on them in just a moment. And so in this particular video, we're going to talk about how you could come up with data science project ideas. And so I have summarized this into seven simple steps. And so let's jump right in. So step number one is obviously to identify problems for which you could apply data to solve. And so step number one, it is obviously to identify problems for which data can solve. In simple terms, it means that if you have enough data about something, about some particular situation or problems, and that by analyzing that, you could come up with solutions that will allow you to be better informed about the situation. And then the insights and knowledge that you have gained from the analysis will be able to be used for bringing about better judgment, better results and outcome, whether it be in financial terms or in terms of saving time or also providing value in various ways. And so here you could make use of your domain knowledge which could either stem from your current occupation whether you're working in business whether you're working in chemistry biology if you're a lawyer if you're a medical doctor a researcher an entrepreneur a content creator a business person or it could also stem from your personal interest whether you're interested in sports movies, music, art. And so your occupation and your personal interest on various topics around you could potentially benefit from data analysis. So for example, in the health domain, you might be interested in analyzing the effects of certain pollution on the health. And so what you could do is you could collect data on the health status of the studied population, and then you could correlate that with various parameters, various health status of the individuals living in various locations that you're studying, and then all of the factors and parameters could be analyzed, which might provide you with some key insights that could help you better understand pollution on health. Or if your interest is in finance and business, you could potentially make use of retrospective data to project potential events, whether they're more likely to happen or not. If you're interested in sports, you could potentially make use of past winning and losses data and try to correlate that with various aspects of the game. It might be related to the players, it might be related to weather, it might be related to current events, or you could also make use of video data to perform analysis based on computer vision, make use of the player movements in games to try to correlate with some project ideas or parameters that you're interested in. Or if music is your thing, you might use natural language processing to analyze whether songs are prone to use or favor any certain or particular words more than others. You could also use it to analyze the tempo of the music. You could use it to analyze the topics that the songs are talking about. Or you could also analyze your personal data, your personal learning history. For example, it could come from Spotify. It could come from your Netflix viewing history if you're a movie fanatic. And so the essential thing is you could look around you based on your occupation, your interest, current events around the world. Choose a topic that interests you because you're going to spend some time analyzing the data. So it might as well be interesting to you. You want to analyze it because you are sincerely curious about the topic, which is going to be a big motivator for you to stick to the project because performing these types of data projects will take months, several months. And so if you're interested in the end outcome of the project, that will give you a big boost in you completing the project analysis. Step number two, you want to research about the topic that you're going to work on. And you want to see whether there has been prior data about the topic. Because the thing is, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You want to leverage the collective wisdom that several others have dedicated effort into the topic that you might be interested in. And so instead of starting from scratch, you'll be able to harness all of the knowledge on the particular topic. And so how do you do that? You could make use of Google. You heard right. Googling will allow you to discover past collective wisdoms on the topic of your 
interest. You might find blogs that are talking about sports analytics or on movie or music analytics. There might be blogs about the topic that you want to work on. And so it is a great idea that you read these blogs because it's going to provide you with immense value. It's going to provide you with some inspiration, some ideas to kickstart or jumpstart your own data projects. And the same also applies for YouTube videos on sports analytics or the topic of your interest. For example, some data YouTubers might analyze some data sets and then by watching the video, you might have gained some insights or some best practices from the YouTuber or the data professional that you're watching. For example, Nick Wan and Megan Ristale had created this awesome data competition on YouTube or Twitch called Sliced. And it's like a competition show where data professionals compete in analyzing data or creating data visualization. And you get to see their thought process of what they they're thinking about and what approaches are they choosing for which particular situation. Another great way is to also watch or listen to podcasts. For example, the ones from Ken G on his Ken Nears Neighbor podcast. It's also a great resource for you to watch and learn from other fellow data professionals. Other great podcasts also include The Artists of Data Science, where I have also been fortunate to be on the show. And so the links to all of these resources, I'm going to provide you in in the video description down below. Let's move on to step number three. And so this entails brainstorming possible solutions to the data problem. And so in this particular step, you're going to be thinking about the data problem. You're going to devise an action plan and how you're going to tackle the data problem. Which descriptors do you want to use? Which learning algorithm do you want to use? Is your focus going to be on building the best accurate model or is it going to be based on analyzing, interpreting the underlying features that govern the property that you want to predict? Or are you going to build and deploy a prediction tool or a prediction API for users to use? So all of these things, you want it to be figured out in advance so that you know what is the necessary skill sets that you're going to need. And if you don't have it yet, then it will serve as a great way for you to know what you want to or have to learn about. So some of the questions that you want to think about in this particular step includes how do you want to collect the data? Is it going to be done manually? Is it going to be done by web scraping? Or will there already been a collected version somewhere in a repository somewhere? Another question is how are you going to process them? What features are you going to use to describe your raw data? Will you have to perform some feature engineering, transformation of it, or not? What machine learning algorithms do you want to use to analyze your data? Will your analysis be regression? Will it be classification or clustering? Or will it use deep learning? Will it use or work on tabular data, image data, streaming data, video data, text data? So all of these will allow you to select the proper workflow and solutions that you need to tackle the problem. Additional questions include what approach are you going to use to gain insights from the data? Are you going to use the feature importance or the SHAP library to figure out the importance of the underlying features? And also, most importantly, do you plan on deploying your model as an API or as a prediction server? Perhaps using Streamlit to create a web app or front-end interface for your predictive model or not? So having all of this laid out crystal clear will allow you to figure out what you need to do or learn. And so a short message from our sponsor, Discover Data Science, powered by Wiley, which is the premier information hub for the field of data science with in-depth guides on careers, degrees, and industry-leading programming languages, Discover Data Science's goal is to provide accessible resources and materials for prospective students and professionals. Through Discover Data Science, expert-driven articles and publications, you'll learn more about which data science degrees help accomplish your 
professional goals, the tools and skills that are necessary for a successful career in the field, which career paths appeal to your personal interest, how to land a job in data science. And as you know, data science jobs are rapidly expanding on a global scale with a growing need for qualified data science professionals. It's never been a better time to earn your degree and pursue a career in this rewarding field. You can begin your data science journey by visiting discoverdatascience.org powered by Wiley or visit the link in the description below. And so now that you already have the solution and action plan from the prior step in place, in step number four, you're going to now proceed to the implementation. You're going to chart exactly in a workflow manner how you're going to tackle the data set, how you're going to analyze it. For example, where are you going to get your data? What is the data type of your data? If it's a tabular data set, how are you going to process it? Afterwards, are you going to use SQL or Pandas to retrieve the data, process the data, are you going to perform some feature engineering? Or if your data is in text form, are you going to perform some text processing? Which approach are you going to use? If it's an audio form, if it's a video form, perhaps you might need to use computer vision or also natural language processing. And afterwards, you will perform some form of feature engineering. And then you're going to select learning algorithms that will be used for analyzing your data. And afterwards, how are you going to interpret the data? What feature importance are you going to use? Are you going to use SHAP? And afterwards, how are you going to deploy it as mentioned already will it be as an api or as a streamlit web app so here you want to lay it out and then write it in a flowchart manner so that the precise step and the sequence in which it will be performed will be clear and when you have this in place you're going to thank yourself later because it's going to save you a lot of time down the road because when you have the plan crystal clear you'll be able to proceed the project in a timely manner because you always have something to look to as you progress through your project and so in step number five, it's already covered briefly or mentioned briefly already, which is the collection of the data. Will your data come from a pre-existing repository or database? Or will you have to collect it manually, either as the survey data, or would you have to perform web scraping to get your data? And so keep this in mind as you evaluate how you're going to collect the data and the pre-processing that is necessary of the data. In step number six, you're now going to take the data that you have collected and now you're going to perform data analytics on it. You're going to perform exploratory data analysis where you go over the parameters or descriptors or variables in your data set and try to figure out the importance of various underlying features on the variables that you want to predict or focus on. In statistical terms, you want to analyze the contribution of your independent variables on the dependent variable. For example, your dependent variable or Y variable could be viewership on YouTube if you are a content creator. And then the independent variables could be the various parameters surrounding the video data, the topic of the video, the retention time, and etc. So in a nutshell, it will be your Y equals to F of X equation, where you're going to figure out the contribution of the X independent variables on the Y dependent variable. And so your machine learning algorithm will be the function to make sense of the relationship of the x variables so that you'll be able to predict and understand how x influences y. And so typically in this particular phase, you might use Jupyter Notebook, such as the one on Google Colab, for provisioning your analytics workflow. So I personally use Google Colab for creating the data analytics workflow. And once that is in place, I will convert the Jupyter Notebook into a Python script, which I could then embed inside a Streamlit app if I want to make a front-end prediction tool so that users could just click click and get the prediction results. Or I could also deploy it as a API. And so here in the Jupyter Notebook, you want to make sure that it covers all of the essentials. Exploratory data analysis so that you could analyze the individual X and Y variables. Aside from that, the various data pre-processing of the data, the 
data splitting, data validation, model building, model comparison, and benchmarking, which will help you to determine what is the best learning algorithms, what is the best learning parameters to use, and then finally, how to extract useful insights in the form of feature importance, such as the Gini index from Random Forest or other tree-based algorithms, or also from the SHAP library, the SHAP values, from which you could perform model interpretation on the importance of the features. And so finally, in step number seven, you want to take the data and the analysis that you have performed, and then you want to consolidate that, make it concise so that you could present it to the general public or to the target group that you need to present to, such as your shareholders, stakeholders. And so you want to present your findings from your data analytics in a clear, concise, and informative manner. So you want your findings to be presented in a way that is easy to understand, as well as highlighting the most important information. It is also important to provide context for the findings. Why does it matter to the audience to know a particular feature or a particular algorithm that you want to use? The thought process behind that selection. And therefore, it is important to provide context for the findings and also to explain any implications. For example, if the data is showing a particular trend, whether a positive or negative trend, you also want to take a deep dive into what is actually going on underneath, what features are responsible for that, and that it is also important to note that correlation does not necessarily imply causation. And that's all. That's the seven steps on how you could come up with your data science project ideas and how you could implement them. And so let me know in the comments down below, is there anything else that you personally use to come up with your data project ideas? And so if you reach this far in the video, drop a light bulb emoji in the comment section so that I know that you're the real one. And while you're at it, subscribe if you haven't already, turn on notifications so that you'll be notified of the next video, and also smash the like button. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.